I there it is. Here I am. God, these things are so fast. Hi, this is me, Jacob. I'm reading a golden book for Beth Joslo. How about that? Hi. How's it going? Thank you for doing this. Funny thing. How are my pores? Uh, so yeah, this is edition two of the uh, Ex Libris Anonymous or BookJournals.com um, promotion, in which I uh, suggested that I'll read a golden book to anyone. And this one is from Beth. Hi Beth, thank you. It's Hopalong Cassidy. Lends a helping hand. This, this book is ancient. And it's from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Uh, Hopalong Cassidy lends a helping hand. Uncle Bill was riding to meet the stagecoach at the Big Ridge stop. With him was Hopalong Cassidy, whom he had met at the Bar 20 Ranch. Hopalong had learned from Uncle Bill that he was going to meet Danny, and Hopalong had offered to go with him. That will make the younger youngsters proud indeed, said Uncle Bill. He worships you. The two men arrived at Big Ridge a half an hour before the scheduled arrival of the stage. Who's driving the stage? asked Uncle Bill. I guess it's Rex, Rex Stover. You know that hombre, don't you? Yes, replied the older man. I'm glad he's the one, for he'll like Danny, and Danny will like him. And then there's an illustration of them. A very sincere look. One man to the other. Stagecoach. Bar Ridge Post Office. You know, Hopalong, that kid has a yen for growing up to be a, another Hopalong. I think it's a great ambition. Well, it's flattering at any rate, replied Hopalong. I do like that kid. So do you, just a bit, don't you? A smile lighted up on his face. This book is really weird. There she comes, Hopalong announced a few minutes later. His attentive ear had heard the first faint sounds of the oncoming incoming coach. I have an errand or two in the stores, Hopalong. Would, you, would it be too much to ask for you to take the boy to Bar 20? I do not want you to be kept waiting. Um, I'll come along as soon as I can. The stage came to a stop. Danny, who was impatiently waiting for the coach to stop, alighted and ran towards the two men. Hi, he called and was warmly greeted by Uncle Bill and Hopalong. Hop along. Hop along. We're glad to see you, kid, Hop along told him. And I'm glad to be back, Danny answered. It seems a long time. How's it going to end? Well, you two go on your way to the Bar 20. I'll join you there later, Uncle Bill explained to the boy that he had things to do in Big Ridge. We'll get along until you return, won't we, Danny? Hop along, look down at the boy. Mind riding behind my back, he asked. There was a happy light in Danny's eyes before he answered. Oh, on, on topper? <laughs> boy, oh boy. Riding on topper was an experience. Could anyone wish for more than that? Uncle Bill rode towards the settlement, which was about a quarter of a mile south. Hop along with Danny riding behind him, rode off to the ranch. They traveled along happily. They had barely started when Hopalong spied a man riding down the side road. Big Pete, eh? He said in a low voice, as if speaking to himself. I wonder what's on his mind. Wait here, he ordered the boy. I have a little investigating to do. Danny got down from the horse, and Hopalong turned back. The rider, Big Pete, was now out of sight. It was lonely country, but Danny was quite at home. He had been living with his Uncle Bill for several years, and he was, in much, he was as much at home here as he had been in Big City in the big city where he had lived before he came out west to make his home with Uncle Bill. He was not afraid as he watched Hopalong and Topper going down the trail back to the place where the stagecoach had stopped. Soon Hopalong was out of sight. When Hopalong reached the stagecoach stop, he dismounted and soon and stood there waiting quietly. His hunch was that Big Pete was making his way there. He knew Big Pete, and he knew that Big Pete was a dangerous man at any time. He pulled out one of his guns and tested it. <coughs> Big Pete, he knew, did not like to be questioned. Nevertheless, Hopalong had some questions that he wanted answered, and answered by Big Pete himself. But Big Pete did not appear. 
If he was bound for the stagecoach stop, he was he was taking his time getting there. Hopalong began to grow impatient. Could his hunch be wrong? If Hopalong only only knew it, Big Pete had other plans for the moment. Big Pete had seen Sop Hopalong and Danny. Once out of sight, he was quite certain that Hopalong had seen him. He dismounted and worked his way back to watch them. He saw Hopalong right away, and after waiting a safe length of time, he walked up to Danny. Hi, young un, he growled. Hi, young one. You're coming with me. Danny started to run, but Big Pete caught up with his lariat. What's that? I think that's a horse. Horse. A lariat? I don't know. You'll make good bait, my boy, for your Uncle Bill, he growled. He'll pay a pretty penny to get you free. Then a whirlwind struck him. Hopalong had returned in just in time. Now, said Hopalong, after he had securely bound and tied the bad man, there's plenty coming to you. Then he called to Topper, who came trotting over. You'll have to carry double weight for a short spell, old horse. Let's be off. With Danny riding Big Pete's horse and Big Pete himself, trussed on Topper's back, they made their way to Blue Ridge, to Big Ridge. There they presented Big Pete as a gift to the sheriff, who luckily was at the settlement. Hopalong explained matters to him. Uncle Bill, coming out of the general store, saw them and hurried over. Hopalong explained to Uncle Bill the things that had happened to Danny. And now, added Hopalong, I'm tired of saying the word Hopalong. Can I, I'm going to say Kitten Face. And now, added Kitten Face, I've got to go back to the sheriff's office and help attend to our troubled, untroublesome friend. I can't go along with you, but I'll be seeing you soon. And Bill, bring Danny over to Bar 20. We'll all be glad to see him. I will, said Uncle Bill. So long. So long, added Danny. As they rode off, Kitten Face Cassidy watched them. A fine lad, that Danny... Then he made his way to the sheriff's office. And then there's a little picture of that sheriff guy. Or, I don't know, maybe it's Kitten Face Cassidy. I really can't tell. But he's a kindly looking man. Oh, it's gone seven minutes, I'm sorry. Um, th that was a really weird book. I can't believe that somebody wrote that for somebody to read to kids. Because I don't know what the whole idea was there, but it was a, a really weird experience for me, and I hope it's been a wonderful experience for you. Beth Jozzolo. I'm going to make this into a journal for you in about two minutes from now, and then I'm going to send it to you in the mail. Thank you.